Greetings YouTube and welcome to Jurassic World Evolution. This is my video tutorial on what it means to extract fossil DNA and how it is you can increase the genome progress. This is a very fundamental part of the game, something you are going to want to learn very very quickly if you are to have any success with your dinosaur career. The game itself does explain these systems to you as you progress early on, but it doesn't hurt to go over what we already know in order to make sure that we understand what we're doing going forward. Now, although the system does become a little bit more complicated later on, as you would expect, as the game begins to throw more tools at your disposal, since we're covering the basics today, we are going to be covering the three fundamental buildings that are required for genome progress to be increased. They are the Hammond Creation Lab, the Expedition Centre, and the Fossil Centre. As soon as you have an understanding as to how each of these three different buildings function, you'll be well on your way to creating a successful Jurassic Park. The first of these buildings then is the Hammond Creation Lab and this is where we get to make a baby dinosaur. So the Hammond Creation Lab will need to be connected into an enclosure as well as into the normal area of the park. Each time you successfully create a new dinosaur it will be released into the enclosure and away from the proximity of the guests. However, whether you are able to create a new dinosaur depends on the species genome progress. Now what the genome progress basically is, in a nutshell, is the percentage chance of actually creating the dinosaur you've selected to incubate. For example, if your Struthiomimus has a genome progress of 78%, then what this means is that you have a 78% successful chance of actually incubating this dinosaur. If you fail the incubation process, then the dinosaur is lost and you'll have to try again. You can also see options to modify the genome and also a selection of genome traits. Don't worry about this feature for the time being, let's just stick to the simple stuff until we've got a handle of it. Now you can't actually incubate a dinosaur until its genome progress is at least 50%. The game simply won't allow it up until that point. But even so, 50% still represents quite a catastrophic failure rate, something we would like to avoid. So how do we go about increasing the genome progress? Well, this is where our next two buildings come into play. First of all, out of the next two, we have the Expedition Centre. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're actually going to discover a new dinosaur species. So we're beginning with its genome progress at 0% and I will show you how to raise it to 100% for perfect success rates in incubation. And the way this works is like this. First of all, over at the Expedition Centre, we open up the World Expedition Map and select a dig site. We then send our team over to that dig site and hopefully they'll find some fossils for us. Those fossils will be returned and put into our fossil control center. And from there, we will be able to extract the DNA from those fossils and actually that will improve and increase our genome progress. Now, I'm sorry if that sounds confusing, but let's put that into practice and hopefully it will all make perfect sense. The Dracorax then is an option for a fossil we can send a dig out for and I currently have not experienced this yet in my park which means that the species genome progress is at 0%. So we're selecting that from the expedition map and hopefully within a minute or two, in real time that is, our team will return with some fossils that we can harvest the DNA from. Once the dig team has returned with any fossils they've successfully collected then those fossils will automatically be placed in our fossil center for our convenience. All the fossils then will appear in the fossil center at that point. And you can see you have two options on each fossil. You can extract the DNA or you can sell the fossil. Now, some of these fossils will not contain any DNA, in which case their only purpose is for selling for money. So don't be afraid if you see a fossil that doesn't have any DNA, just sell that immediately. It has nothing, uh, no other benefit for you to hold on to it for. However, for fossils where you can extract DNA, those fossils are going to have a certain rating from one star to four stars. And what this means is that when you extract the DNA, the rating is going to determine how much of a percentage it's going to add onto the genome progress. So a four star rating is going to add much more to the genome progress of that species than a one star rated fossil. Fairly self-explanatory, I would imagine. And fortunately, you can also queue fossils up so you haven't got to keep returning to the fossil center in order to start extracting the DNA from each fossil. All the fossils that are present in your center can be selected at once and the game will progress through them one by one automatically. 
At this point then, I'm going to break this down into a step-by-step -step process where we're going to learn a species that's not even yet available in my Hammond Creation Lab and boost its genome to 100%. This particular species is known as the Dracorex, and as you can see, there are a couple of dig spots that we can choose in order to harvest the fossils. So we're going to go ahead here. I'm going to go ahead and pick one where the Dracorex isn't linked with another species, so that we can hopefully get more fossils for the particular species that we want here. And then we're going to wait for the dig to complete and see what we collect. The moment the dig has been completed, you'll get this expedition complete message that appears on the screen. And that means that the fossils that have been found have been moved automatically over to the fossil control centre. You'll also know when the dig's been completed because the helicopter that you sent off will have returned back safely. Over at the fossil control centre, we can check here and see that we've discovered two Dracorex fossils from that last dig. So we're going to go ahead and queue both of these up in order to extract the genome. Now because this is a new species that we had not yet experienced in our park, the genome will be starting at 0%. Which means that we're going to need to find a few more fossils before we can actually build this dinosaur, create it and show it off to our guests. Now in my experience, when you first start developing a genome or building a genome, when it starts at 0%, it will build up quite rapidly to begin with, but then slow down towards the final few percent. So you will need more fossils as you go along the genome in order to complete it. Since you can't incubate a dinosaur with less than 50% genome, we need to head back to our expedition centre and get more fossils. Since it won't expire for several more digs, I'm going to repeat the Canada dig, which is where I'll be sending my team, and collecting the fossils, rinsing and repeating this process multiple times. And back at the fossil centre here, you can see that we're making progress on our Dracorex genome. We're now at 28%. I'll queue up these next two fossils that we managed to collect at the dig. This third one can just be sold. And then once this is done, or once the expedition's finished the current dig, we'll start that off again and start extracting more DNA. A few digs later, our genome is closing on 50%, which is when we'd first be able to incubate this dinosaur. And even a couple of more digs later, I've managed to get it now to 73%. So well above what we need to actually incubate. Though still a chance of failure, but let's give this a shot. At our Hammond Creation Lab, we're going to select Incubate Dinosaur. And we can currently incubate two dinosaurs at a time, though for now we're just going to select the one. And there's the Dracorex, it's now showing up. And it has a 77% chance of incubation. So we're going to go ahead here and just have a brief look at the modified genome. And this is where we can adjust the traits of our dinosaur, including the cosmetic appearance of it. And one of the important stats is the rating, which you can see on the Dracorox genome just down the bottom there. And the higher the rating, the more the guests are going to like it, and your overall park rating is going to improve from that. And you need to improve park rating in order to unlock extra things later on, in particular, in order to unlock whole new islands. Whether you modify the genome or not, and that is optional, eventually you're going to want to select Incubate Dinosaur. Now remember, whether this succeeds or not is based on the percentage of the genome progress. So at any point during this progress bar fill here that you're watching now, this could fail if you're not on 100%, but obviously the closer you are to 100%, the less likely it is to fail. Since we were on 77, I think it was, percent, I kind of expect this one to work without any problems. If you do fail, it's not a huge deal, you will just have to try that again. For the sake of this video, I'll skip ahead. Of course, when you're playing, you can go and do other things while the incubation process is occurring. But as soon as the incubation has finished, the dinosaur won't be released until you actually go back to that screen and select the option to release the dinosaur. And that's all there is to it. The dinosaur is going to come out into the pen and you will have to just make sure you look after its needs. But that's going beyond the scope of this tutorial. I decided I wanted a second Dracorax in my park here, but I went ahead and made sure that the incubation rate was 100% by finishing off the genome here. And I did that just by repeating the same process I've shown you. I sent my team out uh, to the dig sites around the world where the Dracorax fossil could be found, and then we went ahead and harvested the DNA at the fossil center in order to actually finish off that genome, get it to 100% and guarantee our success in incubation. 
There we have it then folks, the basics of improving our success chance of incubating dinosaurs and increasing the genome progress. I hope this little tutorial has helped you. If it has, let me know in the comments, especially also please let me know what you think of Jurassic World Evolution so far if you're playing along. But if you've enjoyed watching the video, don't forget you can support me by leaving a like and being subscribed to my gaming channel. But that's it for me for today folks, I'll see you next time.